Hey, what's up, YouTube? So as you may know, the last two Tales of games, Tales of Berseria and Tales of Zestiria, are based in the same universe, but are set a thousand years apart. Of course, this means there are going to be tons of references between the two games, as well as more backstory on characters. If you have played both these games, then the connections I will mention will most likely not be new. However, for those of you who only played one of the two games, or for those whose memories may be a bit hazy, maybe you'll find something new that you didn't see before. Some of these are also theories, since they don't really have strong enough evidence to support the thesis. And before I begin, I gotta let you guys know there are gonna be spoilers of events and characters. Major spoilers. So if you don't want anything ruined, play the game, then come back and watch this video. Given that it's been a thousand years between the games, the language is gonna be a bit different. Berseria refers to the invisible heavenly spirits as Maleks and the demons as demons. That's demons with an E. Zestiria refers to the heavenly spirits as Seraphim and the demons as Hellions. I'll be using the terms Malek and Demon since I like those terms better. In Zestiria, a woman in the Shrine Church mentions a legend that states, When the sky turns red, the world will be shrouded in evil. This is a reference to the Scarlet Knight which occurs three times in Berseria. Once in a flashback, once at the beginning of the game, and once near the end of the game. The evil could be referencing the first opening which allowed people to see demons, or the fact that humans are more likely to turn into demons during this time. The silver flame given to Soray by Lila and Zestiria originally belonged to Lafiset, who would go on to become Motilus. The silver flame is an ability that was able to purify most demons. The only demons that it could not purify are dragons and those whose hearts were already twisted or corrupted, such as Rokuro who remained a Yaksha at the end of Berseria. This explains why some characters couldn't be purified in Zestiria like Lunar and Cardinal Fortin. In Zestiria, Saray finds the crest of the Enominat at Artorius' throne. Enominat and Artorius are the main antagonists of Berseria. Enominat is the original 5th Empyrean, before Motilus took his place, and Artorius was the first shepherd. In Zestiria, Saray needs a divine artifact to armatize, in addition to needing to complete a trial before he can use his armatized mystic art. In Berseria, Velvet frees two Maliks that were under the influence of the Enominat, one of them carrying the bow divine artifact that is found later by Saray in Galahad Ruins. The Malik mentions wanting to pass the bow down to future generations, in hopes that humans and Maliks can armatize in a way that benefits both partners. He also goes on to say that armatization for this purpose would require a test, or a trial if you will, that demonstrates the will of human and Malak. Morgrim is a Malik that takes the form of a fat cat, whose partner was Shigure, one of the antagonists in Berseria. After Shigure's death, Morgrim is left alone with his body. In Zestiria, Saray meets Morgrim in the later half of the game, in the form of a demon. Saray saves her and she becomes Lord of the Land for Pendragon. Attack is a special type of Malik called Norman. In Berseria, the player meets Attack at Norman Island and upon talking to him, he mentions wanting a sturdier headgear. Attack is also turned into a demon by the time of Zestiria and is purified by Saray. When he is purified, he is seen wearing a samurai helmet, which is much sturdier than the hat Normans typically wear. Zenritz plays the role of the grandfather for both Saray and Miklio in Zestiria. He is a very powerful Malik with thunder abilities and has a domain over Elysia and Lake Haven Heights. There are quite a few mentions of his name in Berseria. A peddler in Logris mentions the Isle of Lake Haven, being under a constant thunderstorm which refers to Lake Haven Heights. During one of Magilu's stand-up comedy skits, she mentions Elysian Thunder, referencing Zenris and the hidden town of Elysia. And lastly, at the end of Berseria's extra dungeon, Heaven's Gate, the Malik at the end name drops Zenris and says he had a dream where humans and Maliks could coexist. The final boss at Hexen Isle in Zestiria is the dreaded zombie dragon, but he was not always a dragon and was once alive. The zombie dragon actually used to be a Malik by the name of Silva. Silva is a supporting character in Berseria who was eventually turned into a regenerating dragon called Hellkite by Enominat's hands. The player fights Hellkite once but was unable to defeat it. 
The party returns to Hexen Isle at the end of the game to kill it, but finds out it has become more powerful due to absorbing the malevolence in the area, the same thing the zombie dragon was doing in Zestiria. Once the party defeats the dragon, he falls and becomes a skeleton, which will later be found again by Soray in Zestiria and defeated again. I'm Agil, the captain. She's Rose. Nice to meet you. Rose is one of the main characters in Zestiria who joins Soray in the later half of the game. There is a lot of speculation that she is somehow related to two characters from Berseria, Rokuro and Eleanor. One of the pieces of evidence is her looks, which is probably the worst evidence you could come up with in my opinion. But the argument is that her hairstyle and color are very similar. Fortunately, the other support sounds a little bit more feasible, but it only really connects Rokuro to Rose and not Eleanor. It also still isn't enough to determine ancestry to Rokuro for sure, but I think this evidence is much stronger. One of Rose's mystic arts is called Rangatsu Ryu Kawasemi in Japanese, although there is no mention of Rangatsu in the English localization. Rangatsu is a fighting style that only Rokuro should know, as he killed his brother, the only other person who knew this style. Rose's mystic art Kawasemi also bears a striking resemblance to Rokuro's second mystic art, Rangatsu Heron. To add more icing to the cake, Rokuro prefers using dual swords compared to his brother who uses a great sword, and Rose's weapons are pair daggers. Now, short swords are different than daggers, but I believe this is still a connection. Aizen is Edna's brother and is one of the playable protagonists in Berseria. By the time Zestiria happens, he will have become a dragon. There are numerous references to his ultimate transformation into a dragon with his Malik design. The jacket he wears contains two rips where his shoulder blades are, which is where his wings would be, a dragon logo at the center back, and silver scales representing the tailbone of a dragon. His break souls are also dragon moves titled Draconic Drive, Dragon Dive, and Howling Dragon. When he's being corrupted by malevolence in one of the end scenes, we can see the aura surrounding him take the shape of a small pair of wings. Aizen's favorite animals are squirrels, which was revealed in a skit about Casper's dogs. This is a reference to the Falkwind squirrel discovery in Zestiria, near Rayfalk's spirit crest, which he'll later make his home. You said there was something you had to settle with my brother. In Tales of Zestiria, Zavid mentions having a promise to keep with Aizen. In Berseria, we see the events that would lead up to this promise. Zavid had a lover before the events of Berseria, but she became a dragon. first time I tried to talk to you. He smacked me pretty good then too. He believed there was some other way to change her back, but Aizen knew there wasn't. Zavid eventually accepts this fact and Aizen kills his lover, thus freeing her. Aizen knows he himself will also eventually become a dragon due to the malevolence that just affected him, and does not wish to hurt the people he cares about. So Zavid makes the promise to kill him if that were to ever happen. This also explains Zavid's attitude change from not killing anything in Berseria to promoting it in Zestiria. Without the ability to purify, the only other way to free someone is to kill them. Zavid is the owner of Siegfried in both games before it's given to Saray. The gun was originally found by the pirate Eifried. Eifried dropped the gun in front of Zavid before he was captured by Melchior. Distracted Melchior long enough to hand Siegfried over to me. Siegfried plays two important roles. One is that it's the reason armatization was possible, and the other is that it was the weapon used to defeat the armatized Heldolf. In Berseria, Melchior was able to steal information of Siegfried in order to complete the armatization research. This knowledge was kept by the Malik and was eventually passed on to Saray by Lila and is one of the main focal points of Zestiria. Velvet also finds a manual detailing the purpose of Siegfried and references the battle where Saray uses his allies as bullets to fire at Helda in order to separate him from Mautilus. It mentions that the gun is an anti-dragon weapon that can sever power links, however there is no mention of how the bullets are made. Lafayette mentions looking for the bullets, however Aizen tells him that the gun is a Vide's and he should tell Zavid everything they just learned if they were ever to meet again, implying Zavid probably took a journey between the two games. Siegfried belongs to Zavid now. I have a feeling he'll track those bullets down, even if he has to cross the whole world looking for them. After 
In Zestiria, we find out through a skit that the Norman leader lost the fight to Amalek and was never heard from again. This references the battle between Aizen and Phoenix in Berseria and also shows how everything leads up to Phoenix hanging from Edna's umbrella in order to watch over her. Phoenix hunted down Aizen due to his neglect of his sister and challenged him to a fight. If Aizen were to lose, he would have to visit his sister and confess that he has been a pirate this whole time. If Phoenix were to lose, Phoenix would have to obey Aizen's every command. And that's how everything happens. And from any dragon who may one day attack her. We managed to defeat it. After defeating the legendary Wyvern, Zavid mentions this is where his journey with his old companions began, and how the Wyvern was an old acquaintance. I first embarked on our journey way back when. This was a slight acquaintance. The Wyvern was actually saved by Zavid in Berseria. Velvet falls into a trap and was attacked by three Maliks that were turned into Wyverns. Velvet and Aizen kills off two of them, and before Velvet could finish off the third one, Zavid intervened and saved the Wyvern with Siegfried. This was also the event where Melchior was able to steal Siegfried's data. Maven is the name that is passed down to people who are the storytellers of time. In Zestiria, the player finds a coffin where a great female storyteller is buried. Some people believe this is the burial ground for Magilu, one of the playable protagonists in Berseria. Magilu's real name is later revealed to be Magilani Kalu Maven and was one of the storytellers of time as you can see her recording information in one of her books at the end of the game. Like Melchior, she is believed to have the ability to extend her life. This is supported by the fact that one of her titles is called Super Granny. The only issue is that it's unclear how long she can actually extend her life, as the storyteller died 700 years after the events of Berseria. It's also possible for the grave to belong to another maiden. The small village of Stoneberry in Berseria becomes the town of Lastenbell in Zestiria. There are three discoveries in Zestiria that can be found in Berseria which points to this conclusion. The biggest evidence is the one of the townsfolk mentioning building a bell tower out of stone, which is one of the three discoveries. Right next to this person is a youth who plans on running for mayor when the village gets bigger and naming a big plaza in the middle of the town, Lasten Square. Stoneberry is also known to produce a poisonous vegetable called Radish Bell, which is another one of the three discoveries. Potatoes are actually highly poisonous. Oh yeah, Radish Bells! You know those have got poison in them, right? Poison? Last but not least, we have the huge stump in Stoneberry, which is the final discovery, stating that the stump has been around for at least a thousand years. Something interesting is that players in Berseria can see mountains in the distance in Aldina Plains that resemble Rayfalk Spirit Crest. The former Aldina Plains in the west also become known as the Meadow of Triumph. The main exorcist capital, Logris, turns into Pendragon, the capital of the Rolands Empire. The church in Logris is currently under construction, and Aizen estimates it will take centuries to complete. This church will eventually become the shrine church located in Pendragon. The churches bear striking resemblances to each other, and so does the two capitals. Lothringen was an area where the abbey trained future exorcists. It eventually became a hub called Logrin in Zestiria. The resemblance is not subtle at all. We can see the tower, although a bit destroyed, is still structurally the same. Berseria has numerous references to Lady Lake, the capital city of Highlands. A woman located in Taliesin's church reveals a rumor that Lake Pernia is believed to be covering the ancient capital of the Holy Kingdom of Highland. Another man in Taliesin's tavern mentions using waterways to drain Pernia Lake in order to expose the city. This is a reference to the Vivia subterranean aqueduct located beneath the city. We find out from a man in Stoneberry that there is a dragon cult that goes by the name of Tintagel. A thousand years later, the Scattered Bone used Tintagel ruins as their hideout, which likely belonged to the Tintagel cult as you find the dragon corridor deep inside. Lastly, there are a bunch of other renamings of explorable areas that are in both games. The Fens of Nog becomes Plitzerback Wetlands. Warg Forest becomes Litwork Woods. 
I believe Zamal Grotto becomes Cambria Caverns. In Stoneberry, someone mentions a shrimp centipede drawing on the wall in a cave to the south of Aldina Plains, which is a discovery in Cambria Caverns. And Bridget Raven has the same layout as Western Bolt Gorge, although it has some slight alterations. And that's all I got for connections between the two games. If I missed anything or you think something is wrong, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and found a connection you didn't know about. I'll see you guys later.